Would you stand with me just for a moment as we go to the Lord in a word of prayer? Our Father and our great God this morning, God, we just come before your presence. God, we come thankful and grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. The Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, the God that you would speak to us, in us, and through us. Father, we ask, God, that you would give us, give us blood-dipped blood -dipped ears, give us hearts that are open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then, Father, when it's all said and done, God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you so richly deserve, for we ask all these things in Christ's precious name we pray. And all those that love the Lord say with me, amen, amen. and amen, and amen. You may be seated. Take your Bibles and locate or your instrument of choice and locate James chapter 3. James has a very simple message. <laughs> that one of the smallest members of your body can cause you the most harm. It's like Alexander the Great. It's small, powerful, dominate, it dominates, penetrates, it even saturates. It can be an unruly member. Your tongue, yeah. your tongue can write checks that your body can't cash. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Beloved, once you speak it, you cannot retrieve it. Therefore, wisdom says, think before you speak. Speak with care because you care. There are two things in the atmosphere. There's intent and impact. When I was pastoring in Tampa, Tuesday was my counseling day. And invariably, I would be meeting with a couple and the wife would be crying because there's issues. And the husband would always say, he would simply say, Pastor, all I said was. <laughs> Some of y'all been there. <laughs> because men, men, men hear words. Women feel words. I stopped by to tell you, words have impact. Words have meaning. You know, we've all grew up, no, well, maybe not all of us, <laughs> but those who grew up with when Moby Dick was a mental. Yeah, I thought you, yeah, yeah, see that? <laughs> and we would say that that sticks and stones may break my bones, but talking will never how many know that's a lie? Yeah. Because words hurt. Broken bones will heal. But words, words cut to the quick. And so, so James says to us, speak with care. We've all perhaps at some point in time had our mouth in motion before our brain was in gear. We have all said some things that we wish we could retrieve out of the atmosphere. In our homes, on our jobs, at church, at work, nationally, locally, even globally. Once it's out, <laughs> It's out, it's out. It is part of the fallen human nature. We got it 
honestly. We are part of Adam's family tree. Therefore, we must be careful how we speak, when we speak, and how we speak. You see, steak is a, it's a great choice to meet, and particularly, I'm a porterhouse kind of guy, you may have noticed. <laughs> but a steak is a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing on China. It's not too on, on, on plate, on a paper plate. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't taste the same. And so, so are words. The psalmist talks about their fitly frame. And so sometimes, sometimes we got to know, we got to know not just what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. There's sometimes, sometimes, I, you, know, you know, we have to say to our wives, hey, babe, just say it so I can receive it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Don't, just don't talk now because you, you got to go home tonight, so be careful. <laughs> and so he says, James says that Speak with care. My grandmother would say, my grandmother would say, say that she would say, whatever's down in the well comes up in the bucket. Yeah. It came from someplace. What you said came from someplace. Paul said, from the abundancy of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so I want to encourage you this morning, speak with care. We are to speak with care because we care for those who are listening. We do not want to cause them any hurt, pain, or shame. Therefore, James says to us this morning, James says four things to us this morning, four things. The first thing James says to us this morning, he said, the tongue is powerful, Bridle it. Ah! The tongue is powerful. Bridle it. James says, grab the range of your tongue and bridle it, muzzle it, take control of it before you lose control. The teacher, the preacher, the leader, James says, has great influence and with influence come responsibility. The tongue is a powerful member of a teacher, a preacher, a leader, a counselor. Therefore, bridle it. The teacher assignment requires a highly uncommon person. In order to stand behind the desk, in order to, to ascend to this platform, James says it requires a very unusual person. The person who stands here can't walk like those down there. They can't talk like those that stand down here. See, if, if your walk and your talk doesn't match, James says, don't come up here, stay down there. Because the 18 inches requires an uncommon person, an uncommon lifestyle. James says the teacher, the leader, the preacher, special and precious individuals in the Lord. However, the call to teach, to preach, to lead in the church in ministry comes with a warning label. James says three things. First, uncommon. <laughs> uncommon. James says that the qualification and the standards are so high it requires and demand an uncommon person. A rare bird that flies in rare air. Someone who walks and talks at another level. He or she is an uncommon person. Their life has distinguished them. Their lifestyle has provides for them a platform to teach, to preach, and to lead from. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, Paul says this, an overseer of Pesbuteros, an overseer 
must be above reproach. Uh, an overseer must be epilambino. Epilambino, the word epilambino means above reproach. In other words, his life doesn't look like Swiss cheese because it's got so many holes in it. The epilambino, the person that, that leads uh, the pasburos, says that his life must be a life that is a beyond, above reproach. In other words, it means that you can't rail accusations against him. My grandmother would say, if there's enough smoke, there's fire someplace. Everybody ain't lying on you. And so he's just swirling accusations against you. Is it swirling? Like he says, James says, James says, James says, and Paul says, it can disqualify you. Because the epilambino, the pesbuderos, the pomain, the, the pastor, he says, that leader, that teacher that stands in that Sunday school class, that stands in that small group class, must be above reproach. He said, so think before you speak. He says, notice. The qualification. Look at the text. James chapter 3 verse 1 says, My brethren, <laughs> let not many of you become what? James says, I know, I know you want to be up front. I know you want to be out front. I know you want to stand before. James says, be careful. Too many of you are slipping and sliding and MLM's riding. James says, be careful now. Don't be many teachers because some of y'all slipping and tripping like a bad transmission. <laughs> James says, watch the text. Knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. In other words, God's going to judge them Different than them. <laughs> yeah. He said, those who elevate rise to another level. There's a greater judgment. There's a greater standard. There's a greater requirement. Yeah. And so James says, not only does it require an uncommon person, but there's a second thing James says, it's unattainable. <laughs> It's unattainable. James says we all blow it at times. There are times we simply misspeak. We've all sinned, said things we ought not have spoken. There are times, there are some things that are best not said. <laughs> Just because you think it, you ought not speak it. Beloved, Look at verse 2. Verse 2, James says, we all stumble in many things. And if anyone does not stumble in words, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, there is how many? None righteous. How many? No, not one. Hmm. No, not one. He says, Roman James, uh, uh, Paul says in Romans 23, uh, 323 says, for all have and come of the glory of God. Oh, God says, no, not one. No, not one. We are all, listen to me. My, my, my sister would say, we're all a hot mess. <laughs> come on now. That's, for, that's from the Hebrew. <laughs> In the sandwich shop down the street. But he says, he says, we all, we all, we all are a work in progress. And all God's people said, amen. amen. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. The good news is God is not through 
with you yet. There are some people who wear peppermint socks because they keep putting their foot in their mouth. <laughs> beloved, beloved, James said, James said the problem is it, it's, it's, it, 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 it's uncommon, it's unattainable. And third, James says, it's untamable. Unattainable and untamable. <laughs> now we're getting to the heart of the matter. Look at verse three. Verse three says, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that, we, that they may obey us. And we turn the whole body. Look, at, uh, look also at ships. Although they are large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member, boasts great things. See how great a far as a little fire kindles. The tongue, the tongue, the tongue can set a forest ablaze. Loose lips sink. And so do they destroy churches. It ain't just ships. It's homes. It's jobs. It's careers. Loose lips. Don't, only, don't just destroy, they kill. He says, he says to us, James says to us, remember the tongue is powerful, bright on it. There's a second thing, second thing I want you to see. James says it's, it's powerful, but it's also the tongue is perverse, uh, perverse. He said, therefore, steer it. Beloved, because the tongue is powerful and it's perverse, you must steer it, you must control it, Listen to me. If not, it will destroy you. Hear, hear me with your good ear this morning. Whatever runs you will ruin you. Whatever runs you will ruin you. James says, bridle it. Steer it. Take control of it. Why? Here's your two points. It's destructive. Woo! <laughs> the tongue is destructive. No, 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 notice the text. Verse, 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 verse 6 says, among all the parts of the body, ah, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is able to do what? Ah, it is a whole world of what? The tongue is what? <laughs> now, listen to me. Don't shoot the preacher. <laughs> Some people make the news. Others just, re I'm just reporting. I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. He says, your tongue and my tongue has the potential and the ability to be wicked. Wicked. In Jesus' name. Notice the text. He says, corrupting what? Ah, your entire body. You see, your tongue will make people hate you. Your tongue will make people shun you. Your tongue will make people write you off. Your tongue, I don't care how beautiful you are and how much makeup you put on, your tongue makes you look ugly. He says, it can set your whole life <laughs> on fire. People have lost jobs that way. Yeah. Speaking something they ought not be talking about. Yeah. Saying stuff they ought not be saying. He says, for it sets on fire. It is set on fire by hell itself. In other words, God says, I'm not a part of that. You know that conversation y'all having back there? I'm not a part of it. You know that conversation y'all, y'all, you know, you know they say, they say, you know what they said? They said two things, two, the fastest way to tell news is to telegraph and tell a woman. Now that's what they said. I don't know about that now. I'm just. 
I said, I'm, you know, some people make the news, others just report. I'm just reporting the news. <laughs> Beloved, all of the members of your body, your tongue can probably do the most harm. Amen. The tongue is like fire. <laughs> it's easy to get out of control. <laughs> Listen to me. Fire is a beautiful thing in the fireplace. It's a problem in the curtains. Not only is it destructive, James says it's deadly. It's deadly. Look at the text. Verse 7 says, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one can tame the tongue. Ah, it is a restless and evil full of what? Be careful how you speak. The tongue. The tongue out of control not only do harm, but it kills as well. We have this type of potential to do harm with our tongue. This cancel culture. Oh, we live in a cancel culture society. Because this, this, you see, listen to me. You don't have to just speak words. You can type them. You know, you can, you can sing a lie, tell a lie, and type a lie. And, and, and you, know, you know, one of the big things we got to do, one of the big things, you know, you got to get off Facebook and put your face in his book. The problem in America it's not with sinners. Because sinners do what sinners do. They sin. The problem is with Christians, the saints that ain't. And so we, 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 who, we who name the name must walk the walk. Amen. We must talk the talk. Listen to me. My grandmother would say it this way. Grandmother would say it this way. She didn't have but a sixth grade education. She didn't have a whole lot of Education, but she had a lot of revelation. <laughs> grandmama said, Grandmama said, Grandmama said that the tongue in your head and the tongue in your shoes must be moving in the same direction. <laughs> your walk must match your talk. He says, The tongue is powerful. He says, Brighter lit. It's perverse, steer it. And then third, the tongue is polluted. Fireproof it. Fireproof it. Two things. Fireproof. Why? Because the tongue, ha, it's double tongue. You say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? Double tongue. Well, we, let me translate it from the Hebrew again. You know, the guy with the sandwich shop down the street. He said, he said, double tongue means that you know people who talk out of both sides of their neck. When they with you, they say one thing. And when they with the other guy, they say something else about you. We call that, now you call it two-faced. We call it double tongue. They speak with a forky tongue. Yeah, that's how tongues are. They're always wagging. <laughs> yeah. James says they're destructive, they're deadly, and they're double tongue. He says it can be turned on or off, right or wrong, good or bad, bitter, sweet, cursing and meaning, kind in the moment, any time, whatever the pleasure depends on how I'm, what my mood is. I will determine how and what comes out. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says... With the tongue, we praise our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and our Father, and with it we... Oh, no. Now, I know that's not, that, that, that's not water stone. That's the left stone. That's the mother people. That's the mother people. He said, but the same tongue we praise with, we curse with. He says, who is, 
who has been made in God's likeness. The tongue behavior, he says, is emotionally driven. The tongue is fickle and unstable. James says it ought not be that way for the child of God. Listen to what he said. Look at it. I got to move. I got to move. He says now, he says the tongue, the tongue, he says it's, uh, it's double tongue. But then he says it, it ought not be. What does he mean? What does it ought not be? In other words, in other words, the tongue of the child of God ought to be set apart, sanctified, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In other words, your tongue, God has given you this Holy Spirit that to able to control the tongue in your head. In other words, your tongue and your speech ought not be like the world. Why? Look at what he says. Look at verse 10. Out of the same mouth come praises and cursing. Brothers, and I'm so glad he said sisters. Because sometimes the sisters get left out. <laughs> I want y'all to be equal. Because <laughs> sometimes, sometimes he say brothering. And y'all feel left out. Well, he ain't leave you out this time. He ain't leave you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, brothers and sisters, this should not be. How can we be light to darkness? How can we be salt to a saltless society if we talk it and acting just like them? The community around the church ought not hear the foolishness in the church. Because we, we got a different tongue. Because our tongue have been saved, sanctified, and set apart for God use only. And so we don't talk like and act like the other folks. Because we're different. We are light. We are called to be light in a dark world. Salt in a saltless society. They ought to look to us, not run from us. We ought to shine bright like a beacon on a hill. That the world says, I want to be like them. I want to walk like them. I want to talk like them. I want to sing like them. I want to pray like them. See the problem, the problem, the problem that 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 somebody said, God said, He said, I, I went looking for the world and I found it in the church. Amen. I went looking for the church and I found it in the world. And I couldn't tell the difference. We ought not be. James said, This ought not be, brothers and sisters. He says, We we've been picked out to be picked on because we're different in Jesus' name. He said then, number four, the tongue is powerful, bridle it, it's, it's perverse, steer it, it's polluted, fireproof it. And then finally, he says, the tongue promotes, ah! sanctify it, sanctify it. Listen, look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? The tongue delights and bites. The same water that refreshes can also be life-threatening. The same water that sustains life is able to take life. We've had this last couple of months, we've had a number of people have died through riptide off the coast. Florida. We have seen this in some of the uh, tropical storms that have come on shore. Proverbs 18, 21 says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Therefore, he says, and those who love it eats its fruits. Beloved, speak life, not death. <laughs> speak blessings, not cursing over someone's life. Words are powerful, therefore speak with care. Verse Proverbs 18, 4 says, the word of a man's mouth is, are like deep waters, a flowing river, a fountain of wisdom. 
Words penetrate deeply. Be careful how you use them. Proverbs 10 verse 11 says, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Beloved, please note the difference of the two, the two different flavors, the two different results. They are never just words. Words have meaning and impact. Proverbs 13, 14 says, a wise man instruction is like a fountain of life, turning people away from the snare of death. Once again, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Beloved, I was at a conference. I was doing a men's conference down in, in the Virgin Island. And there was a man, and I was talking about the power of a tongue and, and words and how words cut to the quick and, and how that, that, that you may heal from broken bones, but it takes decades sometimes to heal from words that ought not have been spoken. And I talked about how many times how kids in life get off track because the mom or the dad said something when she was eight years old or when he was 10 years old. You'll never be anything. You'll never amount to it. And that kid, that, that, those words at eight years old so impacted his life that it led him down a road he could never recover from. There was an 85-year-old man sitting in the back of the church weeping. Weeping. I was wondering what he was weeping about. And so he was, became uncontrollable. And so I stopped and I asked him, I said, sir, sir, can I help you? Can, I, can we pray for you? He stood up. He said, I'm that little boy. I'm that little boy. My dad told me when I was 10 years old, I would never amount to anything. And I've struggled all my life trying to meet my dad's expectation. I'm 85 years old, and I'm still chasing something I can't catch. Weeping because of words. 85 years. You say, you know, you know, we say, we say, hey, just get over it. Just move on. Everybody can't just move on. Michael Jackson, you know, beat it. <laughs> Yeah, I got the right shoes, but I can't moonwalk. <laughs> you know, every black man can't dunk either, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know y'all didn't know that, but I'm telling you. Some of us need a ladder. But Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson struggled all of his adult life because of the abuse of his childhood. He did, he became a pedophilia because of what happened as a child to him. It doesn't matter how much you make. There's something money won't cure. Amen. There's something roses won't fix. Words. Words are powerful. <sighs> Beloved, listen to me. I got to close. I got to close. You know, a black man, a black preacher don't need an introduction. He's a conclusion. Y'all laughing too hard. <laughs> tongue, the tongue, the tongue. The tongue reveals, not produces. James 12 says, can a fig tree produce olives? My brother or a grapevine produce figs. And neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. Ah! The tongue merely reveals the nature and the DNA of its source. Yeah, I wish I had time to develop it, but I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. If your tongue is inconsistent, then there is something radically wrong with your heart. Listen to me. There was a Christian, young Christian man that, that uh, 
uh, who became very angry, very angry, and, and he, he began to use inappropriate language, and, and he just went on. He went into a tirade, and all of a sudden, later, later he, he caught himself. He was embarrassed about the type of language he used, and he turned to his partner in business, and he said, he said, I don't know where that came from. His partner said, it came out of you. Yeah. Grandmama had it right. What's down in the well will come up in the bucket. Yeah. Listen to me. I was talking to a young lady. I, 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 I got to close. You said, preacher, you said that, you said that three times. I know I said it three times. I said it three times because I'm a Baptist. I said it one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm really going to close. You said that's four times. I know, because I'm a black Baptist. I said four times. <laughs> I was talking to this young lady, and, and she was telling me, she was, she was getting frustrated, and her son, she was having a problem with her son, and she was telling me about, kind of explaining about what, you know, what he had been suspended from school, and she was gone. And all of a sudden, you know, she just got caught up in the moment, and she just started, <laughs> using all these explicit, <laughs> And then she stopped and she realized, I'm talking to the pastor. She said, oh, pastor, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, pastor. I only cuss when I get angry. Woo. It's like the guy that, 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 that they wanted to make a deacon. The guy was recommending him to deacon. They, were, they had deacon uh, candidates. And, and, and the guy, the deacon, was saying, this young man, he's going to be a great deacon. He'll, I recommend it to the church. He's a great man, great father, great businessman. And he only cuss when he get drunk. Yeah, be careful. Your tongue will reveal who you are. Listen to me. This is called the fire, the spirit-filled life, living under the control and the authority of the Holy Spirit. This is where we gain the victory over the power of the tongue. Who can tame it? <laughs> The Holy Spirit can tame the tongue. He can tame it, save it, sanctify it, and make it pure and holy. Listen to me this morning. If you're struggling with your tongue this morning, I would like to recommend the best speech therapist I know. His name is Jesus Christ. He can clear it up. Uh, he can clear up, clean it up, clear up, clear up your speech. From bitter to sweet, it all starts at the Savior's feet. It's like the song of the 70s said, if I could turn back the hands of time, <laughs> oh baby, I would not have said what I said. I would not have done what I did. The problem is you can't turn back the hands of time. This is a day of healing. This is a day of forgiveness. Someone here this morning need to use nine of the most powerful words in the English language. Ah, someone today. You see, you see, needs to speak, needs to say, there's someone today you need to say these words to. Someone needs to hear these words. Nine of the most powerful words in the English language. Listen to me. It'll save your job. It'll save your marriage. It'll rescue your home. It'll heal your church. Nine of the most powerful Powerful words ever spoken. So, preacher, what are they? I'm glad you asked. Here they are. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Say it with me. I was wrong. Said, I was wrong. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Somebody needs to hear those words. Somebody needs to speak those words. There's healing in words. If we would dare to speak, we will release the power that's in the words of God. James says, be careful ah! how you speak. When you speak and how you speak. Because words don't only have meaning, they have power. 
life and death is in the power of the tongue. Speak life, not death.